Take four. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Rose Wall Reviews. This is the sixth in a series. And if this is the first time you're watching us, go back and see some of the other ones and scroll down on the channel because there's over 240 interviews that Journey Wade Hack and myself, Lynn Fairley, have done on the red carpet for the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. Due to our um, cave dwelling pandemic issues, we are doing what we call the Rose Wall Reviews. And tonight we're really fortunate to be a part of an interview by Scott Feinberg of Sasha Baron Cohen. It was the longest interview we've participated in. And so this, this review also might be a little bit longer, but it's because it's Sasha Baron Cohen. And by the way, he borrowed Journey Wade Hack's red bow tie, which is why he doesn't have it tonight. That's and, my story and I'm sticking with it. Yeah, I would stick with it too if mm -hmm. I were you, Journey. Mm -hmm. But because Journey represents um, a whole different um, point of view, which is why we like doing these together because we, we do collaborate and sort of complement each other in terms of uh, what we watch, what we review, and what we think about things. He gets and has seen more of the comedy that Sasha Baron Cohen's done than I have. I've seen more of his dramatic work and uh, some of it's really, really special, including the uh, trial of the Chicago 7, for which he's up for an Oscar and has already won several awards as well as, and here's the entire name of this movie, which is amazing, Borat subsequent movie film, delivery of prodigious bribe to American regime for make benefit once glorious nation of Kazakhstan. Or simply Borat subsequent movie film, or sometimes known as Borat 2. By the way, this title now holds the Guinness Book of Records as the number one longest movie title title ever in the world. And this is something Sasha Baron Cohen's proud of, is that he has won the Guinness Book of Records for this title for what he calls a mockumentary comedy. Mm -hmm. Film directed by Jason Walliner in his feature directorial debut. So I'm gonna turn this part over to Journey Wade Hack, and he's gonna take us somewhat chronologically through what we participated in in this, this interview we just finished watching tonight. Uh, so Journey, you're up. All right, well, I guess we the interview went in chronological order and so will we. Um, Sasha Baron Cohen uh, was born to uh, immigrant Jewish parents, if I got that right, in, uh, in the UK and attended Cambridge University. Um, he got his start making, um, making some skits that he went into good detail on, uh, uh, sort of just playing around out in, uh, gosh, I guess it would have been in London. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, comedy com for his friends. Comedy right? for his friends primarily, mm -hmm. and, and from there figured out that, uh, that this was a calling for him. Mm -hmm. And um, he has since gone on to appear in, obviously, Borat, Borat 2, Bruno, um, Oh, what's the other one? Uh, he's, oh, he's, Ali G. Ali G. Thank you. There you mm -hmm. go. Um, and he uh, he's just shown this incredible range, which has only deepened and widened as we get to see him branch more in recent years into dramatic roles as well. And well, um, what we found out too, as well as at Cambridge University, he did serious stage plays, mm -hmm. including Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. And then his thesis. His personal thesis. Do you want to talk about his thesis a little bit that he wrote in, in Cambridge yeah. University? He uh, majored in history there and he wrote a thesis about um, American Jews who had been, uh, uh, I guess you'd say, disproportionately represented among white people who were um, supporting, uh, actively supporting the civil rights movement um, in America in the 1960s and 70s. Correct. So his he wanted to find out, he actually went to Atlanta and um, lived in, in various uh, difficult situations to interview these white Americans that happened to be Jewish 
and the, the blacks who were uh, protesting for their civil rights to find out if they knew whether or not they were, what's the word to use? They were uh, uh, allies, I think. Allies, allies. Uh, and this, this he wrote as his thesis uh, for school and found out that in fact, the black activists had absolutely no idea they were Jews. And the Jews weren't really making it very public news that they were Jewish at the time supporting the black uh, civil rights movements in the 60s in Atlanta. Now, I remember this. I was a really little kid, but because my mother particularly was and is an activist, schooled us in these kinds of things and made us very well aware of what was going on at that particular time in our lives because it did affect us directly. Hmm. Um, I grew up in a bubble in San Barbara, California, a very, very white and to this day hmm. uh, Republican bubble where this film festival takes place. Less so today, I should say, actually, less so. But there was one black child during my entire education from kindergarten all the way through junior college in Santa Barbara, one black child in our school that tracked my grades and two or three black families total that lived in Santa Barbara until I'd say the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, and now that population, that demographics changed quite a bit. Uh, so. It was very important to my mother that we, we learn about it, and this is how come I knew about the uh, activism in the 60s happening in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And here's Sasha Baron Cohen, as a young university student, trying to find out if they're allies. I thought that was amazing and recognize at, to this day, a lot of what he does is stand for justice and stand for rights, and boy, does he ever take chances and risk, is willing to risk his life like Abby Hoffman in the movie, uh, The Trial of Sh Chicago 7, to advance uh, justice and not be a bystander. How many times did he say, it's important for us not to be a bystander? He said that many times. Many times over. It reminded me of something uh, I'd read that um, years ago he, he had, while at school at Cambridge, uh, had a history professor who I believe specialized in studying the Holocaust in the lead up to that. Mm -hmm. And um, the line I'm paraphrasing was something like, the road to Auschwitz is paved with apathy. And um, I think even, you know, I was much younger when the first Borat came out, that was uh, one of the bits of trivia around the film that really stood out to me. That, oh, is that, that right? I didn't know Part of his that. mission was to, to bring out um, not just the overt bigotry that you'll see in, in his films, but, but also the ways in which people will um, hear something that's overtly bigoted and kind of behave apathetically towards that. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Thank hmm. you for that. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was rather taken aback by that. Um, I, and I think it was pretty accurate, not so paraphrased. I think that is what he said. More or less. Yeah. 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 So then uh, from there, from coming back to England and, and writing his thesis and showing that, in fact, they had no idea they were allies, which is a shame, actually. I think he did a TV program in, in Britain that was canceled. He had all kinds of really odd jobs. Uh, he worked one day as a security guard. He worked um, <laughs> in really funny situations where it was just absolutely impossible for him to uh, be, be accepted. Several television shows in a row were canceled. Um, he was just working too far out of the box. At, at that time, uh, and I, I think that's where he got, he stopped and started and stopped and started. And then, then I think Scott Feinberg asked him, where did Borat come from? How, where was, how was he born? Hmm. And I think he was born in a character because he was out and about in London interviewing people. No, 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 he had a skateboard. Now, do you remember the scenario where he, was um, out with a cameraman and he had a skateboard and he joined some skateboarders and started to interact with them as a completely different character, not mm -hmm. as himself. Mm -hmm. And then the tourist bus drove up and he hijacked the microphone on the tourist bus 
and started interacting with those people and mm -hmm. realized that he could, he had the talent to sort of make them believe who he, that he was that, that tour guide or that he was that skateboarder. Mm -hmm. And I think from there is, I think, where he, that was kind of the springboard for the Borat character in his mind and started to kind of ferret that out little by little by continuing to do this around London for the most part. Mm -hmm. is, that's how I understood it. Yeah, I wasn't sure which character, whether it was Borat or Ali G, that he was uh, talking about in that specific anecdote. Actually, but both. Yeah, I, I imagine. Think, I think it was an amalgam at that point. Yeah, and that style that is now so trademark to him, I think, of, of uh, interacting with people who aren't aware that it's an act, um, uh, began around that time. Yeah, I think I think so because I, if I remember right, it was more more of an Ali G thing that came out of that, but then Borat was already cooking in there. It was already cooking. I mean, I can't wait to see what else this guy does. He's so talented. He's only 49 years old. Wow. I know, isn't that something? So, okay, so I got off track there a little bit. So chronologically, the next thing that happened to him was, um, what, what movie? I believe, uh it started with uh, the Ali G show, the Ali G show, um, and he he got to flex his his gifts in that way with with that character and bring that out. And then I think uh, Borat came, and then shortly after Bruno. I don't know how that relates to when he started developing them, but in mm. terms of the release of the films, I believe that's correct. And um, and then he took a long break because. Uh, uh, well, his life was in danger. <laughs> his life was in danger, and people people were um, starting to get wise to what yeah, was, was going on. Famous. He was too famous, yeah. etc. Yeah. And then, um, you know, he ended up doing a lot more uh, uh, work in dramatic film, and, yeah. and also uh, he had a great story about getting the privilege of sitting, sort of shadowing Martin Scorsese during the time of shooting Hugo, which came out in 2011, I think. Mm -hmm. um, which is just such an enviable position. Mm. And um, from there, I think he was kind of drawn back into the, the character work and the um, political purposes underneath them uh, in the age of, uh, of the 2016 election and so forth, mm. and returned roaring with uh, Who is America and several characters therein that he... He had 10 at one point and then mm -hmm. boiled it down to six. One of the things I was um, amazed by, well, he, he only did actually five films total, mm -hmm. I think, and there were ones he just couldn't turn down. Because mm -hmm. it was Steven Bill, Spielberg who called, it was Martin Scorsese who called, mm -hmm. and so on. So he did them, and, and it was it was good thing he did at that time, I think, personally, because um, he had taken Borat and Bruno to a point where they needed a rest <laughs> mm -hmm. and he really needed to be safe mm -hmm. um, and so he took these projects on and we find out he's a terrific singer terrific singer um, and I, I was amazed by that and really enjoyed seeing him in these roles and uh, as well as another film he's done recently it's amazing how much work he's done actually in this last two three years and if you haven't seen this see the spy on Netflix, it's remarkable. It's 100% dramatic. There, there's no funny characters in this whatsoever. It's a true story uh, about an Israeli man who goes into Syria to spy on Syria for the sake of the Jewish nation and etc. and so forth. But um, talk about a remarkable. And not only did he write that and produce it, he stars in it. And he's doing all the same work at the same time he's doing uh, the, this Who is America, mm -hmm. this Borat subsequent movie, as, as well as just his general activism. And back to back, he does all of this. But what a departure from what you know of him. So watch The Spy of You if a chance on Netflix. You'll be blown away, blown away by that. So I had to take that because that's in that category of film. We were just talking sure. about that for a second. Okay, so we fast forward all the way up to already uh, the TV show, Who's, Who's, Who is America? Um, now, did you see a lot of that? 
I saw a couple bits, but uh, no, I didn't get to see the whole thing. What what he's doing there is he's he's acting like a fake news conspiracy journalist. That's one of his characters. That's one one of the characters that I I thought was most memorable. Hmm. Interviewing real people in a Kmart. Mm-hmm. Um, mainly Trump supporters. Hmm. Um, and and again he he they. Scott Feinberg asked him, well, how did you find people that had no idea who you are? Um, and, it, and apparently he had a huge research team that he sent all over America mm -hmm. to find people who didn't know who Bor Borat is. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be my mother, for example. Mm -hmm. She's not a Trump supporter. But he had great success finding lots and lots of people who had no idea who Borat or, or even uh, uh, Bruno, mm -hmm. or any of these other characters. And in addition are. to that, he uh, was able to invent uh, a number of new characters and add uh, some really state-of-the-art prosthetics to that process so that he could, he could really just go even further in that direction. Right, that no one had to come in and touch up his makeup, and he could stand in these prosthetics for hours on end, and people would not recognize him at all. Mm -hmm. And he said that was one of the most challenging and interesting times of his career so far in terms of um, acting techniques and the ability to use, uh, did he call it an acting exercise, I think? Uh, yeah, I think the, the process of coming up with those initial 10 characters for Who is America, he, he spoke of uh, in terms of being one of the greatest acting challenges of his life to, to, to develop those. To, for him to say that, I thought was amazing. Mm -hmm. Never mind to be able to use that type of technology that could entirely disguise him. Mm -hmm. So um, that that's pretty genius too. I don't know if I like that better than Ali G. Well, to be honest, I didn't really watch a lot of Ali G. I'd seen the one with uh, Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and he talks about that. You can tell us, tell our audience if they don't know about it, um, how it, how he got into the room because that's one of the things Scott. Uh, Feinberg asked him often, and we would all wonder, how did he get to speak with Dick Cheney? Mm. H how did he get to trick Rudy Giuliani? How did he get in the room with Donald Trump? This guy is just amazing mm -hmm. in, in terms of, um, it's almost like a seahorse, the way they camouflage against a, a reef in the ocean, mm. where he's just, he's just able to get into the room. Yeah, I mean, it seems like there's an interesting story for each one. I recall uh, in this interview with Scott Feinberg, he talked about uh, for the Trump interview, them having set it up uh, in terms of the pretense was that they were interviewing all of the most successful business people in the world. And so Donald Trump said, yes, of course, I'm in that group. And then um, uh, once they were there setting up for the interview, uh, I think the impression was that his... Uh, his director or producer, one of the two, this nice handsome blonde man in his words wearing a suit, um, was kind of the assumed person to be interviewing Trump. And then uh, he said the look on Trump's face was priceless when, uh, when he was informed that it would actually be this man dressed as Ali G. This other guy mm -hmm. who he assumed was just part of the crew. Mm -hmm. So often he was snuck, sneaked into these different, um, different situations as just a crew member behind the camera and then sprung upon, guys, I wonder how he got to O.J. Simpson as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm you sure know, there's, a, there's a great story probably behind each one of these, mm -hmm. uh, these unique situations he has to kind of uh, specially cater to. That, that's one of the most remarkable things he's done. So in a sense, L.A.G. was um, way more challenging that way because all he had to do for who is America is just walk into Kmart's after they had found the, the people that didn't know who Borat mm -hmm. is with his prosthetics on and just go for it. That's that's an easier get mm -hmm. and, and safer for him, certainly. In some cases, yeah. And then there's the other instances where he's uh, he's meeting people who aren't famous, but he's meeting a lot of them and uh, and he has the the potential to cause a riot or get terribly hurt and uh, use the word chutzpah. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, he taught uh, us how to pronounce it mm -hmm, right. Too. Said, don't say chutzpah or something like that. Right. But, um, yeah, he's he just is completely representative of someone with a lot of chutzpah 
to uh, to come in and I hope I'm saying that right, but to come in and, and just uh, be very courageous and very absurd and committed to his, his project there in, in each instance. For example, in Tallahassee, he was um, um, staging, no, actually it was in Arkansas. It's not Tallahassee because that's in Florida. An, um, city that sounds like that in Arkansas is where he staged a fight, the fight in the um, movie Bruno, where there are 2,000 people in the room and there's a big cage in the middle of the room where uh, a wrestling match is to occur. And he, at one point, even though he was told very, very often, do not incite a riot, because that's a federal crime, for which Alan, uh, the, the seven that were on trial for the Chicago, the trial of the Chicago Seven, were in, indicted and in prison for doing. That's how, that was the charge, crossing uh, state lines to incite a riot. Well, he was told to be very, very careful in, in this scene not to incite a riot, but he lost himself in the character and challenged someone to a fight in this crowd of 2,000 people who mm -hmm. did not know who he was. And a guy who was six foot seven charged the cage, flipped over the top of it, and into the ring where Borat, I mean, where uh, Bruno. Sasha Baron Corn playing Bruno was Bruno playing a character, character Bruno had called Straight Dave. Yeah, Straight Dave, Straight yeah. Dave. Which fans of the of the film will will be familiar with. I'm Thanks. Sure. Thank yeah. you for the correction. But it turns out Sasha Baron Cohen, for this reason, had built a trap door in the bottom of that ring mm -hmm. where the wrestling was to take place, and slipped into the trap door at the point this guy came charging into the cage. The, um, audience member, mm -hmm. the six foot seven guy. And uh, he was told, no, go back out there. Let's finish the shoot. My gosh, we've been doing this for weeks on end. Go back out there. And his producer or editor, whoever was there. Probably, I think it was the writer he mentioned. A in writer the interview. Yeah. stuck his head up to see what was going on and see if maybe Sasha Baron Cohen could go up without ending up in the hospital. And Oh, there's security person. There yes. was a security person. And the guy popped his head right back down and said, go, 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 yeah. go, 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 go. And they ran to a car that was already door open, engine running, and took off and drove all the way across uh, the other side of Arkansas because they knew there were people chasing after them mm -hmm. and hid out there for a while and then had to recreate the scene all over again the next day. Like yeah, a day and a half later, something like that. Something like that, yeah, yeah. Uh, and find a new arena and so forth. But and that's what you ultimately see in the film if you watch Bruno is that that second night. That's remarkable to me that he takes these chances. He puts all these other people in danger. The people working with him, the cameraman Maria Bakalova in this last movie, mm -hmm. and everyone else. He's he's willing. He's and everybody around him willing to to take these risks which to me harkens back to his thesis in a way that uh, he's always had this interest in activism. Mm -hmm. And there's always that message in his own movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again in Borat too, as well as The Trial of uh, the Chicago Seven. Which brings us to Abby Hoffman. Yes, it does. Yes. Um, and, and that's of course written and directed by Aaron Sorkin. And would you uh, tell us some more about what you thought of, of that movie? You were a big fan. I was a fan as well, but I really, I really was. Um, it's because again, I I was a really little kid at the time, and my mother being an activist, uh, I I really didn't take a huge history lesson in it. But I remember when Tom Hayden had to go to prison, and everybody was shocked because so many people really liked Tom Hayden, wanted to vote for him. Hmm. You know, he was running for, was he running for president at the time? Or he was running for vice president? He was running for something major. I, and I, we should look into that and correct this, because uh, it, it was either Congress, Senate, vice president, president, Tom Hayden. Some form of high office. Very, very. And he was going to win. He, he was hmm. going to win. And then he's imprisoned hmm. uh, after this trial. And that's who Reddy Edmain, uh, Eddie Redmayne plays. In, in the movie is the Tom Hayden part. So I remember him coming through Santa Barbara and uh, campaigning. 
Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I know. I know. That brings it right home. Doesn't it ever? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that's why I think I was um, a whole lot more interested in that than Borat too, uh, because they came out at the same time, and I also watched The Spy on Netflix, which came out at the same time, and and so that's why I was turning Borat the subsequent movie over to you because um, <laughs> that's the one I didn't um, I really didn't um, follow as much, but in in that and overall. I think Sasha Baron Cohen and in the, sh- the trial of the Chicago Seven, um, they they all understand, but particularly Sasha Baron Cohen, the the power of humor and comedy to expose the ills of society and to humble the powerful. Mm. Now that's a quote by Sasha Baron Cohen mm. um, about about I think someone else, possibly even Abby Hoffman. I think mm. he was saying that about Abby Hoffman. Mm. And he got that role 13 or 14 years ago, and then it went through several iterations and a whole bunch of different directors and called up Aaron Sorkin when he finally decided to direct it and pretty much insisted that he would still have the part that was given to him by Steven Spielberg, who almost didn't give it to him. So these little tidbits behind the scene, I think, are interesting because a lot of people have seen the film, The Trial mm-hmm. of the Chicago Seven, and especially when you're nominated for an Oscar, that it's more prevalent, it's out there uh, a lot more, and it's been out for a while. Um, but for you, those of you who haven't, all these movies are really important to see. But this one is really, really particularly interesting if you happen to grow up in that era and you have to rem- and you remember the, this trial. Uh, so, mm. I, and I, I bet you that's who most of the audience has been, perhaps. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if that's probably, a bet or just a, an opinion. <laughs> yeah, a mix of folks uh, for whom it's an old story, and for some, it's it's quite the news. So quite the news. Yes. Which is what we also try to do here at the Rose Wall. So let's go forward and talk. You you take on um, Borat, the subsequent movie, in in terms of its message, and how he pulled this off again even after he'd already been through Borat and Bruno and this Who is America, Mm -hmm. I think when doing Who is America, he realized maybe he could bring Borat back. Is that Mm -hmm. what he said? I sort of had that impression. Well, the timing would add up in in a lot of ways with that. And I I think one of the the key things that you'll see in the the finished film and that he talked about was um, because Borat had become such a phenomenon, uh, he decided, you know, they had to work in uh, into the story that Borat would come back as Borat, but disguised. So there's several layers of characters mm-hmm. going on here, and um, and so that's what you'll see in the film, where there's there's uh, an accent from a character, but underneath that accent, you'll hear Borat's accent. So it's really uh, quite meta and really mm. really fun and. Um, you definitely see the same thread of, of you know, hilarity and uh, a, a human cord uh, trying to expose the ills of society, as mm. that quote put it. Mm. We uh, got to watch an interview with Maria Bakalova, the co-star of Borat 2, mm-hmm. uh, as one of the um, awardees of the Virtuosos Awards that the festival gives. and. Um, we understood, we found out that Sasha Baron Cohen uh, put the movie on hold to find that character, to find that perfect actress. Mm-hmm. They went through over 400 interviews all over the world, mm-hmm. chiefly in Eastern Europe, to find, to find the perfect actress. And this is a girl in a village in, is it Bulgaria or Hungary? Uh, Bulgaria, a tiny Bulgarian village who had been in some local things, but nothing really... Largely unknown. Largely, very, Mm -hmm. very. And here she's on her way to L.A. to the Oscars um, Mm -hmm. for a Supporting Actor Award. Um, And the reason they chose her is because uh, in all the interviews that they did, the over 400 interviews, the, the person that they were interviewing would not handle the joke well, or all the jokes that had to be told Mm. well, authentically. They were, they were still, they still appeared to be acting the joke Mm -hmm. instead of 
being the joke. And imagine trying to have to, and knowing, going into the interview, knowing you're going to be working, because they're the only two characters in the film, working up opposite. Toe to toe. Sasha Baron Cohen. So lucky that she was unknown, and lucky she really probably didn't know him that well. It'd be interesting to find out how she even found out at the audition, but um, that her just her just natural authenticity and, and not being really a known actress or really being too wrapped up in being an actor mm -hmm. is what got her the part because she was able just to play these jokes out just authentically and, and not have that sort of acting quality to to what she was doing. That, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't necessarily tell that she was acting. Uh, yes. There's a great realism there. And, I think Sasha Baron Cohen also spoke about the other characteristics that made her uh, singular and crucial for this project and that she was courageous enough to go toe to toe with him but into these situations also that where he you know has to worry Puts for his life and danger. so does she. Yes, yes uh, alone in a room with uh, Rudy Giuliani as we now infamously know and many other situations just uh, the full package with Maria Bakalova. She was asked how did you know how to respond to Sasha Baron Cohen and the various different layers of character that he was presenting to her. How did she know when and how to respond correctly to this character, that character, and then Borat? Um, she said it was all done because he stayed in character 24-7 the whole time they were together. Mm -hmm. He was in specific characters. Mm -hmm. And when he would make a change, it was done uh, w it, with his voice. And the second she heard the change in, in his voice or, or the dialect or the accent, just mm -hmm. the little bit of a change is when she could change to match and be her part in that, that moment yeah. in, in the film. And so that also took great talent on, on her part to be able to detect all these different characters she was playing opposite. Absolutely. Just remarkable performance. It's I, hard to I, overstate how talented I she is. I hope she gets this Oscar. It'd mm -hmm. be interesting to see what she does in the future. But what was um, the most scandalous, really? Well, and this harkens back to his activism, is that he really, really wanted to release this film, Borat too, on the exact same day as the last presidential debate, and he got it done. Mm -hmm. um, so it was Amazon that did it for him, that agreed to release it the exact same day as a presidential debate when Rudy Giuliani was to present a hard, hard drive of evidence against the Biden family mm. um, at the, and their criminal acts, etc. and so forth. Uh, but instead, the only thing in the news was... Um, this Borat this film. This Borat mm -hmm. film where Rudy Giuliani uh, is caught with his pants down, shall we say. It's a little more involved than that. Yeah. But how brave was she, Maria Bakalova is key to that scene, uh, Absolutely. To, to have stolen the show, stolen possibly the presidential debate. This little girl in the Hungarian village comes out and along with this brilliant activist and Sasha Baron Cohen steals the presidential debate, has a tremendous impact on the election. And he says, even if one person went out to vote that wasn't going to or was on the fence, I, I am happy for that and, and quite satisfied if I can call myself an, an artist. I mean, he doesn't even, remember that? Yeah, I remember. Even, uh, if I yeah. can even uh, call myself an artist, he, mm -hmm. he's, he's just, uh, really, really fun to see. It was really delightful to watch him in, in his home in Sydney, uh, waving hello to his mom a couple of times and just seeing these people in their own intimate environments, which is very, very different from working on the red carpet for us, didn't you think? Sure, yeah, you get to see people a little more comfortable, I think. It is, yeah. it is, and it's a much longer interview for us as well. Uh, which is why we're doing these reviews on the Rose Wall. We hope you enjoy these. So please, if you will, go to sbiff.org and you can check out there all of the films that have been selected for this year's festival. You can see some of the exclusive interviews that we are recapping here for you. 
and um, they've got everything as is tradition from animation to feature films, documentaries, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole host of stuff. I believe 10, 10, 10, yeah. the student film program is still going on. You can yeah. check that out. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just enjoy. And obviously if you're here and you haven't yet and you'd like to, please hit subscribe, like the video, leave a comment with your thoughts. Thank you so much and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.